In part one of our interview with Dr. John Ralston Saul, he told us about the reasons behind the collapse of globalism. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today in part two of our interview, this world-renowned political philosopher tells us if there is, in fact, a solution to a global financial crisis. When you're in a difficult situation, the right thing to do is to step back and try to understand the context. What is the shape of the problem? If you can get a handle on the real shape of the problem, you can do something about it. If you don't step back and say, okay, how does trade actually work? Are there other ways of thinking about trade as opposed to free trade versus protectionism? Maybe there are other options here. Maybe uh, we have to think about production in a different way. Maybe actually maximizing production is not really a terribly useful thing in the current world sy system where we can create surpluses in three seconds. You know, Chinese can create a surplus production for anything you want. So what does maximizing production mean? You know, we have to rethink all this stuff. Of course, people are terrified to rethink things in the middle of a crisis, but you know, if you can't do it in a crisis, when are you going to do it? The people who are calling for you know, a regulated international money market, our financial markets, are right. We need to do this. We need to do this really fast. Before this, we were headed for uh, probably regionalism. There are already all the signs of the returns of rather old-fashioned protectionism and stuff. Now, either this crisis will actually accentuate the regionalism, or it might actually lead to something different, which there is the possibility of a new kind of internationalism. See, people who talk about globalism, they keep redefining themselves by the second. Globalism is a certain idea of deregulated international marketplaces. Once you move away from that, it's no longer globalism. It's another form of internationalism or regionalism or nationalism or whatever. And, and, you know, we might, if we were really lucky, get a kind of interesting new form of internationalism because of the crisis. There's a moment here where, where people say, what do you do in a crisis? And, well, some of the stuff you do is really old-fashioned. You've got to keep the economy going, but that means you've got to shove the money in to the places where people do things. You don't shove the money in at the top. I mean, it is absolutely fascinating that people who for 30 years have said they represented individualism and competition now say the best thing to do is to shove billions of dollars in at the absolute top and hope it trickles down. In other words, what they're making is a sort of 18th century aristocratic argument. If we give money to the Jukes, the Jukes will ensure that the peasants receive a percentage of it. This is so out of it. I mean, so unmodern. It's worth making fun of that to actually allow us to say, so, wait a minute, why are we putting billions of dollars in at the top? This makes no sense at all.